Yeah, the combination of counts uh, real scale in e-commerce and the data that they have, for example, they'll see 32 billion transactions a year. So massive scale of data combined with Equifax's data really addresses this digital macro or online macro that's really been happening pre-COVID and was accelerated with COVID. Consumers across the United States and around the globe are just doing more things on their phone, on their tablet or their computer. And with that comes the requirement to identify who they are and having more data um, whether it's their email address, their IP address, their cell phone number, their ship to address, their credit data, enhances the predictability of that and reduces fraud. So, so Mark, uh, is it possible that in five years' time, perhaps sooner, perhaps later, once the transition is, is complete, that in fact people will be safer, uh, even if we're using digital uh, uh, devices far more often than we were five or six years ago? But once the transition is complete, in fact, we'll, we'll, our, our data will be more secure than it, it was rather than uh, more exposed as it is currently. We think so. Um, it, it's, a, it's a reality that the world's going to digital and to operating uh, the way uh, we've been doing through COVID and, and prior to COVID. And having more data around that really secures that transaction for the customer and for the consumer to make sure that there's no fraud for them or for the uh, business. And it's just a massive issue. Like in credit card fraud last year was almost $6 billion. And having more data around who's interacting really helps minimize that. On the e-commerce side, it's a massive amount of uh, fraud that happens from people do taking over accounts and then using someone else's name to order something and then shipping it to their address versus the individual that was really uh, on, in the account. So that data elements creates more signals to manage uh, fraud through e-commerce, through banking, through insurance, and across the, uh, across the board. If you look at a long-term chart of your stock, Mark, 2017, if people still remember, it was one of the biggest consumer data breaches we've seen, 150 million Americans' personal data compromised. It, but it's, it's a blip on the stock chart. It's gone straight up. We're, you're trading near record high. What's happening with the underlying business? And, and have you managed to recover from that and grow during this pandemic time? Well, it was certainly a challenging time in 2017. I joined soon after the cyber event, as you know, Sarah, and we really focused on transforming the business. We've spent a billion and a half uh, dollars over the last three years moving our technology and data to the cloud. We think that's going to be transformational in our ability to bring new solutions to our customers. And at the same time, data is even more valuable in a challenging time than it is in good times. And uh, as you point out, in 2020, uh, we haven't reported our financial results yet, but uh, we had an analyst call in December, and we're going to have the highest uh, revenue growth in the history of Equifax uh, in uh, 2020, you know, based on um, the value of the data and analytics that we deliver to our customers. So it's a, it's a business that uh, has a lot of growth potential and count really adds to that by bringing in uh, some new data elements that will broaden our capabilities in identity and fraud, which is one of the verticals we participate in. Mark, do the uh, new digital banks uh, that have started in recent years use your data as readily uh, as traditional banks, uh, i.e. Uh, are they kind of lending on the same uh, requirements as traditional banks would? And, and uh, if so, is the growth you're seeing from them uh, faster, slower, similar to, to tr traditional banks and kind of tied to the, the economic cycle or not? The big macro beyond digital and contactless is around more data. And really, if you look at our industry over the last two, three, four, five years, the addition of alternative data, more data elements, really enhances the predictability of every decision. And the fintechs um, or the digital banks or the digital uh, credit card companies that are out there um, doing business really are very hungry for alternative data. And we believe, and the industry does too, is that more data results in better decisions. So as we bring more data elements in, like our count acquisition, like a paynet acquisition we made in 2019, those additional data elements really enhance that decision and result in a better result for the consumer and for the business that's uh, interacting uh, with that consumer. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.